Welcome to Story Station, Episode 1. In this episode, there are three Indian stories. The first story is titled, The Big Lion and the Little Rabbit. In this story, a little rabbit uses his wit to trick the big lion and save the jungle. The second story is titled, Everything Happens for the Good. In this story, a king throws his advisor down a well to die, but that ends up saving his life. Want to know how? Listen to the story. The third story is titled, Common Sense. Listen to this story to find out how not book smarts, but common sense saved the life of a man. Hope you enjoy it! Today, I will read an Indian story called, The Big Lion and the Little Rabbit. This is a Panchatantra story. Once upon a time, there lived a big lion in the jungle. Every day he hunted and killed many animals to satisfy his hunger. The animals were worried that one day none of them would be left alive. So they all decided to go to the lion and find a solution to this problem. When the lion saw all the animals approaching, he was very happy and he, as he thought that he would not have to take the trouble to hunt. He could just kill all the animals together once and for all. One of the animals stopped him and pleaded that he listen to what they had to say first. He went on to explain that as the lion was king of the jungle and all the other animals were his subjects, the lion would not be a king at all if he killed all his subjects. He would have no one left to rule over. He suggested that if the lion stayed home, one animal would surrender itself each day as food for the lion. The lion agreed to this offer on the condition that if they ever failed to send him an animal, he would go on a killing spree and finish the, all of them off. From then on, each day an animal was sent to the lion, and the lion was very pleased. One day, it was the turn of a little rabbit to sacrifice his life and provide food for the lion. This little one did not want to be the lion's meal. He thought of a plan that would save his life as well as the lives of all the other animals in the jungle. The rabbit slowly made his way to the lion's den. The lion was pacing up and down, extremely hungry. He was furious when all he saw was a little rabbit. He wanted to kill all the animals in rage. The rabbit timidly explained that the animals had actually sent him six rabbits, but five of them were killed and devoured by another lion. The lion roared in anger. He wanted to know who this other lion was, who dared to steal his food. The rabbit stuttered and said that it was a very big lion. He had warned the other lion not to eat him, as his king would be very angry and definitely come to fight him. The rabbit went on to say that the other lion had called his majesty an imposter and had challenged him to prove who was actually the king of the jungle. The lion was furious. He asked the rabbit to take him to the other lion as he wanted to kill him. The little rabbit led the lion to a well and told him that the other lion was in there. The lion peered into the well and saw his own reflection. He thought it was the other lion and he let out a huge roar which echoed back at him. He immediately jumped into the well to attack what he thought was the other lion. The lion dashed his head against the rocks and drowned. The jubilant little rabbit returned to the other animals to spread the good news. The end. I hope you liked this story. The next story begins in a moment. Today, I will be reading an Indian story called Everything Happens for the Good. In one of India's little kingdoms of long ago, there lived a king who, like most of them, was fond of hunting in wild places. His chief advisor was a very intelligent man, and also a very optimistic one. He was famous for seeing the rosy side of things. In fact, so strong was his habit of finding good in everything, that at times this annoyed his ruler. One day, when the king and his advisor were on a hunting trip through a dense jungle which went on for miles, the king decided to have a fresh coconut for his breakfast and finding a coconut tree near at hand. His with his sword, he cut down a coconut. 
But as luck would have it, his sword slipped in his hand and came crashing down on one of his toes, cutting it off. Limping over to his advisor with loud shouts of pain, he was terribly shocked to hear the latter say, Ah, that's wonderful! What? yelled the king. I cut off my toe and you say it's wonderful? This is a real blessing, replied the advisor. By now the king was furious, thinking the man was making fun of him. Take it from me, said his advisor, behind this apparent bad accident that there is some good which we cannot now see. That was it. The king had noticed a dry well nearby, and being a strong man, he picked up his companion and threw him into that well. He set out to limp back to his fortified town and castle. This met, however, walking through a dense jungle frequented by wild tribes of those days, some of whom were headhunters. On his way, the king met a band of those headhunters, who decided that, being royalty, he would make an excellent sacrifice for this month's festival. As you may imagine, the king did not feel at all honored by this decision. The warriors carried him to the tribal priest. It was the duty of this priest to approve of all of the offerings that were to be presented. The priest was most particular to see that the item to be offered to the gods was perfect in all respects. While anointing the king's body, the priest noticed that he was lacking one toe. I'm sorry, he told the king, but we cannot use you after all for this holy sacrifice. The gods will not accept anyone who is not whole-bodied. You will have to go. Naturally, the king was delighted and began hobbling away toward his palace. Aha, he thought, so his advisor had been right. There was indeed a hidden blessing behind that ex accident. As fast as his wounded leg would allow, he turned around and went back to the well where he had left his counselor. There he was, standing down in the well, whistling happily to himself. Now the king managed to reach down far enough to grasp the hand of the advisor and with great effort pull him up. Then he apologized for having doubted him and having thought him a fool. Oh, how sorry I am that I threw you in there said the king as he dusted off his courtier. I was taken prisoner by some wild native headhunters who were about to make me a sacrifice victim. Then they saw that my toe was missing and let me go. And you foretold all this in a way. Can you ever forgive me? You need not apologize at all. It was a blessing that you threw me down the well and left me there. Now how are you going to make something positive out of that, queried the king. Well, said the other, if I had been with you, they would have surely taken me for their sacrifice. The end. I hope you liked the story. The next story begins in a moment. Today, I will be reading the Indian story, Common Sense. This is a Panchatantra story. Four friends lived in a city. Three of them were very learned in all sciences, but had no common sense. The fourth boy, named Subhuti, was not well versed in scriptures or sciences, but had a fund of common sense. One day, all of them thought that they were, there was no use of their learning unless it had brought them money to live happily. Therefore, they decided to go out and seek the patronage of kings. They set out to meet patrons of learning. On the way, the eldest of them, pointing out to the fourth man, told the others, Friends, this fellow is an unlettered fool. He has common sense and nothing else. I am not going to share my earnings with this fellow. Let him go home. The second man also supported the eldest boy's suggestion. But the third boy said, Friends, it is not proper to send him back. We play together and he is one of us. Let us share our gains with him, because elders have said, he who has a narrow mind thinks this is mine, this is his. To a large-hearted person, the whole world is his family. In the end, the other two agreed with the third boy's suggestion and let the common sense man accompany them. The men found some lion bones lying around, and the first man said, Okay, I will use my learning to assemble the bones into a skeleton. With the power of learning, he ordered all the bones to come together and become a skeleton. When the skeleton was ready, the second man commanded flesh and blood to fill the skeleton and skin to cover it. 
When the third man was about to bring life to the body, Subhuti, the fourth man, who had only common sense, warned him, Look, this animal is a lion. If it comes to life, he will kill all of us. The man who was to put life into the body of the animal told Subhuti, You are a fool. Do you think I will lose this opportunity to test my learning? Subhuti then told him to wait so that he could climb up a tree for safety and went up a tree. When the first man gave him life, the lion came alive and killed all the three learned.